Hey everybody, what's happening? Brent Dax here, and we're live on the Syracuse Orange Basketball Facebook page. We are here live thanks to our friends at Krause Health, and we are here after a stunning three-point shot display by the Virginia Cavaliers. Final score at the Carrier Dome on this big Monday. Virginia takes down Syracuse 79 to 53. So we're here chatting live after this one. If you're watching later on YouTube, we appreciate that. For those of you uh, that are watching live here on Facebook, just know we do put this up on YouTube in case you can't make it to a, a live post game chat. They're all posted on the Syracuse Orange Sports page on YouTube in my recap on Syracuse.com. So you can always check it out on your time on demand whenever you want. So getting those comments. Uh, like and share this post. Let people know that we're here chatting after a, a big Monday loss to the Orange. And what more can you say than Virginia put on a not only stunning but record-setting three-point display at the Carrier Dome this evening, 18 of 25 from three-point range. And, yes, that is a record for an opponent against Syracuse, 72% from three-point range, and it was three players that did it all for Virginia. As you go through it here, Kyle Guy was a terrific three-point shooter as it is, but he was just absolutely NBA jam on fire tonight. Eight of ten, both from the field and three-point range. That's all he did. He shot ten three-pointers. He makes eight of them. So sometimes it's that one guy that goes off, right? Well, for Virginia, it was three because you add Ty Jerome to the mix who goes five of six from three-point range, five of nine shooting overall. DeAndre Hunter, more of a kind of Kawhi Leonard inside type player. I think uh, a great comparison made there by Mike Waters in his game preview today. Syracuse actually did a pretty decent job. Jim Beheim just said this at the press conference, and I agree with him. They, they did a nice job keeping him off the foul line, keeping him off that you know sweet spot in the zone. But when Hunter stepped back to shoot three, Syracuse could not stop him either. Five of seven from three-point range, and that's it. So those three players go 8 of 10, 5 of 6, 5 of 7, and hit 54 points. Three guys for Virginia outscore Syracuse entirely. They have 54 points. Guy, Jerome, Hunter, Syracuse scores 53. Total on the evening. Uh, senior night for Frank Howard. He goes for six points and just an assist. Three turnovers, played just 22 minutes. Pascal Chuku had a terrific first half, was looking very active in his senior night at the Dome. He finishes with eight points and eight rebounds, which he'll take from Pascal. Got in a little bit of foul trouble in the second half and uh, certainly not as good in the second half. Nobody really was for Syracuse. O'Shea Brissett struggles again to shoot the ball. He did have six points, eight rebounds overall. He had three assists in the game, a couple of good defensive plays. Uh, Tyus Battle uh, ends up with 11 points to finish with Elijah Hughes and Buddy Beheim, all with 11 points, all leading the way for Syracuse scoring. But Tyus really struggled on essentially what was his senior night, too. Tyus only a junior, of course, but he is on track to get his degree. I don't expect Tyus to be back next season. His stock has already dropped in terms of NBA value if he comes back for another year. Uh, I don't know what it would really do to benefit him. The NBA scouts kind of know what they're getting. And Tyus Battle and the type of player and the skill set that he has, he's just kind of rounding off the edges there. And he's on track for his degree. So I don't think you see Tyus Battle back next year. This was, I think, his last game in the Carrier Dome as well. And he goes out with a whimper in that sense, 5 of 19 shooting the balls. I mean, I don't know if the Golden State Warriors – could have answered Virginia the way they shot the ball tonight. Certainly Syracuse could not answer uh, tonight. So that was the big stab. One thing that Syracuse really had going for it in the first half, remember Syracuse led this game at halftime, 34-32. The shooting was about even field goal-wise. But from three-point range, Virginia was just starting to be unconscious. But Syracuse went into the first half with a 19-14 rebounding edge. And one big thing they had going for them was 12 points off turnovers, eight turnovers for Virginia in that first half, and that's a significant stat in this sense. They only have nine turnovers per game by average. That's the least in the ACC, one of the lowest marks in the country. But now let's go to the second half of this game. You know how blistering hot Virginia was shooting the three. They out-rebounded Syracuse in the second half, 21-14, to 14, and we mentioned they had eight turnovers in the first half, just three in the second, so they finish above average, but right at about it. 9.6 per game. They only finished with 11 turnovers 
on the night. So Syracuse shut down there. How about Virginia? And again, this is all due to that three point blitz they went on. They outscored Syracuse in the second half, 47 to 19. So, I mean, we can go through a number of stats here. This is all about how Virginia shot the three. And by the way, a lot of those were contested threes. Jim Beheim just said it's one of the worst three-point shooting defensive efforts he's ever seen at Syracuse, and he's certainly right to say that. The numbers bear that out. But there were some shots. Jerome hit a 30-foot three-pointer. Kyle Guy's hitting shots with two guys in his face, getting off. He's one of the quickest shooters I've ever seen. How he catches and shoots the ball so quickly for Virginia was impressive. So even when Syracuse doubled the shooter or managed to get defenders out on these guys, they're still making shots left and right. So Syracuse falls to 10-7 and seven in ACC play. They will look to recover and finish out the regular season with 11 ACC wins at Clemson on Saturday. And then it is uh, one and done time from there, my friends, the ACC tournament in Charlotte this year. And then Syracuse, which at this point is on track for an 8 or a 9 seed. And I think win or lose against Clemson on Saturday, they'll be on track to make the tournament as an 8 or a 9 seed. Uh, you don't want to lose out. You certainly don't want to lose this game, although, you know, losing to number two of Virginia, no harm in that. Uh, certainly, you know, Syracuse had that encouraging first half and looked like they were going to be competitive in this game. But Syracuse has struggled. If they played the one, two, and five team in the country in the last 10 days, and where they've really struggled is the second half because they're just not as good as these teams. North Carolina pulled away in the second half, got a lot of help from the refs in that game, as we know, but they pull away in the second half. Duke plays, pulls away in the second half, and Virginia certainly you know, just stun Syracuse in the second half. So the Orange have to work on that. Those are three of the best teams in the country. Those three names that I just said might be the three number one seeds, along with Gonzaga in the upcoming NCAA tournament. Really tough for one conference to get three number one seed bids. I don't really, if I had to predict it, I don't think it would average out. But two out of those three are certainly getting one seeds. Could be three at this point. So what Syracuse lost to was a pretty elite team last night. And, you know, Virginia, as we all know, and this will never leave them, the first number one seed to lose in the NCAA tournament to a 16 seed. But this team looks better. They look locked in, and they certainly look motivated, pretty ticked off what happened to them to losing to UMBC in the NCAA tournament last season. They're not going to shoot like that, game in and game out, but they can shoot, they can defend, they can rebound. Tony Bennett's a heck of a coach, one of the best all-around teams uh, going into March Madness this year. So I, pretty, I feel pretty safe in saying that team is not losing in the first round, the second round, or, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, we'll see what happens over the next couple of weeks. But it take a lot to change my opinion that Virginia is a Final Four team. I think we just saw a Final Four team in the Carrier Dome, barring matchups and all those crazy things that happen in the tournament. Okay, let's hop in the comments. See what you guys are saying. Thanks for hanging out, as always, here. Uh, this time on a Monday night, I'm glad we're here at a reasonable hour. All these 8, 9 o'clock games, some games recently, like, barely even in the first half at this point. We all get to go to bed at a reasonable hour tonight. Uncle Brent's happy about that. Rob saying, Syracuse has some things to work on, make no mistake about it. But tonight was about Virginia. They played probably their best game of the season. Virginia took a step forward tonight and really should be the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. Uh, Rob, I think that's well said. It's not that Syracuse can't work on certain things, but Bayheim, you know, very honest at his press conference, we're just not as good as those teams. And to say you're not as good as the one, two, and five team in the country, but still be competitive in one sense in all those games, you'll take that. It's pretty embarrassing what happened in the second half, but it'd be more embarrassing if that wasn't a team that's in the short breath to be the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. I mean, you got to play better defense than that, you got to be aggressive. You know, the the calls will be out there for people for Syracuse to switch to man-to-man, -man, which is absurd, given that, you have, I mean, you, you don't switch to a defense you don't play against that team in this stretch of the season. Now, can you press? You can press. You certainly can press, but what happens in the press is you get fatigued a lot quicker. I think there was a point there when it was about 50-43, to 43 and you could see Virginia starting to pull away. I don't think a switch to the press there would have hurt. But the way Virginia was just hitting shots, contested shots, double team shots, 30 footers, Kyle Guy catch and shoot, Hunter coming alive, shooting the three ball. I mean, you don't want to say there's nothing you could do, but it was a helpless feeling uh, watching Virginia do their thing in this game tonight. Mike saying that Hunter shut down Tyus. He had no answer. That's another great point, Mike. Uh, we mentioned the struggles of Tyus Battle. I, I'd have to look it up to be sure, but, I mean, Tyus only had, what, 11 points. 
I don't think he scored with Hunter guarding him. And if he did, it was not a lot. So that is a great point, Mike. Hunter really shut him down defensively. James saying that Howard was sleepwalking tonight, turnovers and losing shooters defensively. Yeah, not the uh, senior night that I think Frank Howard had planned. He was losing a lot of shooters, really struggling on the defensive end, losing shooters, losing passes, step behind. Again, Virginia hit some contested threes, but uh, certainly had some open ones as well. Uh, Javen saying, Brent, you can't run the 2-3 every game. Why doesn't Jim ever adjust a man? Also, there are games Tyus needs to pass the ball when he's not in takeover mode. Look at some of the percentages this year. You know, Javen, I'm not going to waste my time saying that Jim should play man-to-man defense because he's just not going to do it. He's just not going to do it. So I'm not going to waste my breath saying they should do it. Now, again, should they press in spots? and try and, you know, spark something, create some turnovers. Virginia's a hard team to turn the ball over, but you were having some success there. The defense was actually great in the first half. It was. I know they had eight three-pointers, but the defense created eight turnovers. They were locking on defenders better. And then in the second half, it, it just disappeared. So you can't ask Jim or me or anybody to say they should switch to man-to-man defense. He's just not going to do it, right? But can you adjust some things? Can you trap? Can you be – uh, man to can zone with man to man principles, press and spots. It all depends. It all depends, pardon me, on how you define it. But they're not playing man to man defense. They just never do. So I just don't waste my time, you know, screaming in the wind for it to happen. Mike noting, I don't care how good your defense is when a team is shooting the lights out from three. You're not going to win the, those games unless you can match that output. Yeah, your best defense was an offense in this case. And Syracuse, obviously, you can't match that. But you've got to match it somehow, some way. And Virginia's a team that typically slows the game down, doesn't have quick possessions. You know, if you give away rebounds and possessions, they'll kill you. And that's what started to happen in the second half. But Syracuse was rebounding well in the first half. They were doing everything they needed to. It's just there's just nights where teams are doing things, and elite teams we're talking about. Virginia, they're number two. You put Virginia and Gonzaga on the court tomorrow, I'm taking Virginia all the way in that game. So you can make the case they should be the number one team. And they did get a bunch of votes to be the number one team in the country this week. 18 of 25, that's unconscious. What we saw tonight, folks, was one of the best shooting performances I've ever seen against Syracuse. It's a record-setting performance. It's literally a record. But in any capacity, 18 of 25 from three-point range, you don't go 18 of 25 in pregame warm-ups, let alone in a game like this. That's just absolutely incredible to think about. Uh, Brandon saying Syracuse basketball this year is not good for my health. 27 years old, and I'm feeling 90 after every game. Uh, let's see. Joe saying UVA never stops on defense. Cues did not have the intensity in the second half. I think that's certainly fair to say. I, I am really impressive, uh, impressed part, I should say, with Tony Bennett pack line defense, how Tony Bennett, how, you know, certain coaches in the country, Buzz Williams doesn't exactly run an up and down style. You know, back when Jamie Dixon was at Pittsburgh at TCU now, selling kids on defense, grind it out, you know, score in the 50s and 60s. I don't know how you do that. I mean, Virginia was lights out, hit 18 three-pointers, yet they only score 79 points in this game. You tell me a team shot 18 three-pointers, I'm going to tell you they scored 90-plus points, maybe even 100. But when you look at the stats, 18 of their made field goals were threes. They had a total of 28. So they had 18 threes and 10 two-point buckets in this game. I just, wow. I'm going to wake up, look at that box score, and say, are you sure that's right? I'm going to keep double-checking myself when I write the recap tonight. Is that right? Are we sure that that happened? 18 three-pointers, right? Can I get confirmation on this? Yeah, it did. Uh, Joe saying as soon as Syracuse fell behind every game, they start hoisting up terrible three-pointers and forced contested shots. You can't have bad offensive possessions against good teams, but certainly Virginia. And we saw why tonight, because they'll come down and they'll be smart with the ball. I mean, again, 18 of 25 is just unconscious, but – Virginia's done that to teams all year. Virginia's lost two games, and both of them have been to Duke. I mean, that's just how good they are at this point. They have at least a share of the ACC title by winning this game as well. And, again, I I think they are pretty locked into a number one seed at this point. Uh, Let's see. John saying, Brent, have to agree with you on the Dome crowd being reactive and not proactive. It does make a difference when the crowd is in it, no matter how good the other team is playing. Got to be the sixth man out there. You know, John, in in the, the sense of tonight, I don't really have a lot of criticism for the crowd because you're just stunned at what you're seeing. 
But there was a point, and I brought up the score before. This was a pivot in the game. I think the way that Virginia was playing, I don't know what Syracuse really could have done here, but it's 50-43. to 43. You could sense the game is getting out of hand, and the crowd is just dead silent. At one point, Jay Billis asks Sean McDonough, Syracuse alum, who's doing the game for ESPN, if he's ever heard the dome this quiet. And McDonough responded that he hadn't. Now, somebody made a good joke on Twitter saying, you know, you had not been to a Greg Robinson coached noon football game back in the day. The dome was pretty quiet then, right? But for a big Monday number two team in the country, I have not heard the dome that quiet as well. And it was a crowd that was just stunned. You're not wrong to say it, John. I think Syracuse, there was nearly 30,000 people in that building tonight. I think Syracuse crowds are way too reactive. They're not proactive, but, you know, they're not making shots out there and playing defense either. The way Virginia was out there tonight, they would have shut up any crowd that faced. I think they would have shut up the Cameron crazies the way they were shooting the ball uh, tonight. Josh saying Syracuse needs to address the fact they can't come back by more than 10 down, but a lot of second-half swoons this year for sure. There's no question about that. Uh, mostly against one of the – better teams they've seen. I mean, one, two, and five in the last 10 days. That's a pretty incredible stretch that Syracuse just went through. This was the one game that got the doors blown off. Duke and North Carolina, they at least hung in there. And, you know, getting that, it goes to show you how important it is to take care of business because this helps your net ranking when you're playing good teams. They don't hurt you. They don't take away quad one losses, especially when they're top five teams, number one overall team, arguably, in Virginia. That's why you got to take care of business against Wake Forest. And look, Clemson is, you know, I don't even know if you can call them a bubble team anymore, but at least they're in the conversation. If they have a deep ACC tournament run, they can work their way back into serious discussion of an at-large bid in the ACC tournament. I think Saturday falls under the take care of business realm because then you're 11 and 7 in the ACC and it doesn't matter what you do in Charlotte. I don't think it matters either, either way. The bubble is so weak this year. I think Syracuse is in as it stands right now. It's just a matter of, a matter of haggling over which seed they're going to get and, and where they're going to go. I saw a projection today that Syracuse will play in Columbus as the 8-9 game against Texas. So uh, depending on you know where you're watching tonight, the great thing about this live chat is we get people from all over the country, all over the world, really. We've had people check in from Ireland, Australia, Japan, all kinds of places here on the live chat. But uh, it, 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 relatively speaking, you're driving from central New York or somewhere where you, you know, the typical Syracuse fan range is. Columbus is about a seven-hour drive from here, so there would certainly be a lot of Syracuse fans if they went there. And that's really what they're playing for at this point. What kind of seed you get? getting? Either way, you're going to be in a tough game. You're going to be in an 8-9 game. You're going to be in a 7-10 game if you're Syracuse. So you'll face either the one or the two seed uh, in the next round. Uh, but it's not going to be a drama-filled selection Sunday. It's not going to be a playing game for Syracuse this year. I think they're a solid bid into the tournament. But beating Clemson on Saturday and one or two at the ACC tournament, uh, certainly not a bad idea. Uh, Colin saying Syracuse can't recruit as well as the other established ACC teams. Uh, you know, uh, you stack Syracuse up against Duke. Yeah, they're not got. They're not getting three NBA lottery picks in their recruiting classes. Are they recruiting well? It depends on who you ask. Like Joe Girard III is not a high-rated recruit in terms of 24-7 and uh, rivals and all these recruiting services, but he's the all-time leading scorer in New York State. He's a terrific three-point shooter. Uh, his, I think his driving to the baskets become a lot better. He's got to get bigger, work on his defense. But Syracuse needs three-point shooters. They got him. Quincy Garrier, a o o O'Shea Brissett type player from Canada that they're getting. Uh, Bryson Goodine, solid 6'4 guard from Rhode Island that Syracuse has coming in next year. John Bulla kind of more of a project, you know, and the Pascal Chukwu ring, kind of getting those, you know, long rangey guys to put in the zone. So that's your class for next year. They missed out on Isaiah Stewart and are still pursuing maybe another player or two, but, you know, stack that up against Duke. Yeah. Stacked it up against Virginia. Yeah. It doesn't measure up, but a still pretty solid recruiting for Syracuse in uh, aspect of, of what they're looking for and the type of players they need to uh, come in. But what you're missing in Isaiah Stewart, for example, that type of player, you want an athletic inside presence. I think, you know, who played in the NBA last night, BJ Johnson, a guy that transferred from Syracuse. I think of Stewart who they missed. I think of Torian Thompson. For some reason, these athletic big men don't see a place in Syracuse. You know, where are the days of even a Renze on Owaku and a player like that? Syracuse definitely needs that. O'Shea Brissett's kind of the best 
a candidate for that right now, but we've seen now four games in a row. He is really struggling to score the ball, and Syracuse needs him to do that. So recruiting, always a fascinating conversation, an ever-growing conversation, but there is no question what Syracuse needs is a you know, a, a, a athletic forward. They need a, a, a big Isaiah Stewart type player. And I hate to keep going back to him, but, you know, they heavily recruited him in the recent cycle before he ended up going to Washington. So you need that type of player. And they had one in Torian Thompson, but he uh, transferred to Seton Hall. And there was a lot of personal reasons for that. And, you know, okay, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be, right? Uh, a couple more comments from you guys. Wolfman, doesn't Craig Forth have another year of eligibility? Dave Syok. I love it. You know who I saw in town recently? Derek Brower. You want to throw some old references? I can play this game all day. You want to play the, the old school references? Bring him in. I think he's got a, a year of eligibility, right? Where's Marius Yanulis when you need him? Bring him back, baby. Uh, Tony noting that Darius Baisley hurt us. That's a great point, Tony. Uh, he w didn't seem to have his mind on college at all. It was interesting how he commits to Syracuse, backs out, going to play in the G League. Now he's not going to play in the G League. He'll be a first-round draft pick. You're going to be a first-round pick. There's going to be some GM that's, you know, it's sad to say this, but they draft so much on upside potential and what you can be not versus what you are, which is unfortunately what has hurt Tyus Battle. The scouts I've talked to say that we, we know what he is. We know what he is and what kind of player he can be if we bring him here. So I think that's why, you know, it's it stinks to say for him, guy comes back, thinks he's got a special team to be on, pursues his degree, had 17 credits last semester, 18 this semester. That could be reversed, but I know he's, you know, working a full semester load, trying to get his degree early and thought he'd be part of a team that still may have a shot. You know, you never doubt Syracuse in the tournament, right, with the matchups and the zone and the things that they have going for them. When they're in the tournament in recent years, they do damage. Final four in 2016, Sweet 16 last year, right? So there still could be that opportunity, but his NBA stock definitely dropped. He was about a 40 to 45 pick in the 60 round in the 60 uh slot nba draft at june he's barely hanging in a lot of boards at this point and the possibility is there in a weak draft that i'm told the scout who knows as i like to call him on my radio show a friend of mine who is an nba scout and he has been dead on with where the syracuse guys are going to go in the last four or five years he said his team doesn't even have tyus on their board period anymore so we'll see how it rounds out things can change and a lot to uh, be seen and done between here and June. But Battle's one of those players, they know what they're getting in him. And, and NBA GMs are betting on upside and potential and, you know, kind of grabbing those guys like Baisley, thinking what they could be, not versus kind of what they are at this point. Uh, let's see. Kevin saying, Q should just focus on recruiting good locker room guys. There you go. Uh, Doug saying, Chuku is a lottery pick. Oh, that's not nice, Doug. Uh, Daniel saying, uh, and now you guys are you're getting punch drunk now. I think we're going to have to shut this thing down. Uh, why don't we do that? Thank you for being here. Always appreciate it. We got one more to go in the regular season. Saturday, Clemson. Be right here on the live chat afterwards. Thanks to our friends at Krause Health. Uh, if you miss it, it is up on YouTube as well. Look for it there. Look for my recap tomorrow morning on Syracuse.com. Mike Waters, Don Detona, Chris Carlson, the crew, giving you great coverage. Uh, and Dennis Nett, of course, on the photos. Uh, I do want to say this again, and I can't say much more than this. All I'm going to tell you is next week, look for a special Syracuse basketball project that I am currently uh, putting together with some great and talented people at Syracuse.com. I think you guys are really going to like this. Uh, so hang out for that next week. Little tease. Keep an eye out for it. Uh, another plug. Uh, not really Syracuse basketball related, but would appreciate it if you guys could subscribe to the Stick to Syracuse podcast. It's a new podcast that I'm doing for Syracuse.com that kind of examines all aspects of life in central New York. You can find it on iTunes and Spotify, Google Play. It's the links right up on Syracuse.com or SoundCloud if you have SoundCloud. So a little plug for that. But tell you what, why don't we come back on Saturday and do this one last time in the regular season. But we'll be here after all the ACC tournament and NCAA tournament games as well, live on Facebook. Enjoy the rest of your night. We'll talk to you again Saturday after the Orange close out the regular season against Clemson.